Okay, so there we go. Yeah. Okay, so this thing gonna go away on the screen. Oh, let me just tell it got it. There we go. Okay. 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 <laughs> All okay, right. So I'll start by saying my name is Elisa Johnson. Okay. And I am an assistant control manager at Costco in the South Indy location. Um, I have worked for Costco for 36 years and I started out in Anchorage, Alaska in 1985. Uh, at that location, that was warehouse number 10. So currently at this point to date, we have 824 warehouses now as a company. And we are the fifth largest retailer in the world. Um, some points on that as well, you probably don't know this yourself, but we are the actual number one buyer for choice and prime beef, organic products, rotisserie chicken, and we are the number one wine buyer in the world. And a lot of people don't realize that. Uh, I've been told that our wine buyer, actually, she, it's a woman. She, when she walks into a winery or what have you, and she says she's with Costco, they get the top dog to work with her because they know that's a great thing for their, their winery and their vineyard. So they get really excited about that. So, um, in Alaska, I met my husband and we've been married for 34 years. He actually uh, went through the police academy and wanted to relocate to Southern California. So I ended up in Southern California for 27 years. I worked in seven different locations there. I was promoted to AGM in 1993. Uh, I was the very first female AGM promoted in the LA area. Uh, it was um, because of that there was a microscope on me to see how I would perform. Because if you recall, or if you've done any studying, most of the time women were considered too emotional to take on leadership roles that high uh, and maybe could not handle the pressure of the job. And I kind of proved them wrong because, you know, as women, we are multitaskers. We have to, uh, if we have children, if we have a family, we have to plan all that, work around it. We can do three and four things at the same time and do it well, where a man wants to do one thing at a time, usually do that excellent, move on to the next task. And how do I know that? Because my husband reminds me one thing at a time, Elisa. So it's like, okay, Ken, okay. You know, so I, I just think, you know, that's real important to understand the makeup between a male and a female in the work in the workplace. Uh, so because of that, uh, it was like I paved a road in that region. And there were other regions that had women as well as AGMs at that time. Uh, keep in mind too, I was in the 39th building by then. So there weren't as many buildings and we were pretty much uh, in the Northwest, Southern California. And I wanna say we had some buildings in Colorado as well. So we weren't, and we, we hadn't gone international. We did have Canadian buildings. And in 96, when uh, Price Club merged with Costco, we picked up the Mexico building. So then we started to expand out uh, to other countries as well. So I was kind of like that pioneer for women. Um, I mean, I really had to teach myself a lot. Back then we didn't have, um, like we have today, we have Costco U, which is, has been developed to put managers and supervisors through to spend a six week time frame. It's once a week, um, but you have projects you're given and assignments to do at work to learn how to handle certain situations with that. So here I was, um, that person that they looked towards to see how well I would do and respond. So as an individual, I'm pretty assertive and confident in my abilities. I have learned that it's okay to ask a question. I tell people now, ask me the question. If you think it's a stupid question, it's probably not. I, let me help you with you the answers and help you develop better. So I did a lot of that. I, I did my own teaching. I had to, I read everything there was available on our, what we call the internet, any manual we had available to read, to know and learn my job. I also reached out to people at corporate, the admin department and the purchasing department, whatever the case may be to get that information because I wanted to succeed. I didn't care that uh, about the money. I just loved the job and I wanted to make sure that I could be there for other women and men in developing their careers. I, I think the best part of my job is to see people succeed. It makes me feel impressed with those folks that they actually want to do the job and they're, they're listeners and they really want to be taught what to do. So it gives you a little touch on that. So in 1993, uh, you know, there wasn't the work-life balance. So I did have to learn how to balance that. And I was very tenacious on making sure that I had time and spent time 
with my daughter. She at the time was three. And then when she started school, I made sure that I, I was involved in school as well. Um, and we have to do that because you can't leave your family behind. Uh, unfortunately, I've seen a lot of marriages break and fall apart because people are too focused on their careers and not don't know how to balance life and work. And you have to, you have to be assertive. You can't always say, yes, 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 I'm going to do something at work when you know you're going to let down your family at home. There has to be a compromise. And Costco's actually got become very uh, aware of that in the last few years and really pushed that work-life balance. You know, I feel like 12 hours is the max you should ever work in a day because after that, you're pretty much, I'm going to say the word, you, useless because you, you, you're wore out. Your brain is done. Your body's done. And there's going to be times where you're going to have to work a few hours because something happened, maybe the building flooded or whatever the case may be. But you, you really have to plan your time and be diligent about setting aside time for everything in your life. Uh, otherwise, you'll, you'll come to resent your job, to be honest with you. You really, truly really will. You want to make sure that you're there for those milestones in your, in your family's life because uh, you don't want to see the pictures where you're not in it. So that's, that's enough on that part. Um, so let me catch up because I kind of was winging it there. Okay. <laughs> so I talked about, okay, so I wanted to mention a little bit more about Costco U. Because Costco U, the development is, of course, the development managers and supervisors, but we do, uh, and during this time, there's modules, there's six. So there's one on conflict resolution, there's uh, effective teamwork, there's effective supervisor, uh, that one's a two-fold manual. And during these projects, we do things like, um, on the teamwork one especially, we give you a uh, raw egg, some straws, some tape, and you got to make a cradle together, and then you have to drop it uh, standing on a chair to see how well your little cradle stays together. So it's effective because we all need to learn to work together as a team. We also need to learn to delegate things out. Uh, a lot of times when you're a newly promoted supervisor or manager, you're afraid to delegate because you want to make sure it's done correctly. Well, if you don't delegate, then you're not getting your job you're not learning your job, your new role, because you're still going back and doing all the tasks that you did in the past. So delegate, and I say trust, but verify. So that's how that supervisor builds trust with you also, if you give them that, that delegation, that task. And then that frees you up to do what your job really is, is to do, you know, is to train and teach others and to run the business. Uh, I would say that unfortunately, uh, we spend about 80% of our time as managers on 20% of our employees. And usually those employees are ones that have issues. And it's, it's a shame in a sense, because we're not out there able to spend that time developing and teaching those 80% that want to succeed and go further with the company. So that's why delegation is important so that we can actually get to that point. We want to hold everyone accountable to being consistent and fair also so that we eliminate a lot of these little problems that we have along the way. Uh, a lot of times when you deal with uh, an employee that's disgruntled, it comes down to a lack of communication a lot of times. The management team didn't communicate uh, or, you know, we told one and we didn't tell the other. So we end up having to backpedal and take care of that. I did, I did also state in the, my presentation I put together that um, if you haven't already taken a class in psychology, it is a good thing for you to do that before you graduate. And I say that because a lot of times we are the only people that our employees have to speak to about issues outside of work. And so you need to be able to recognize what you're capable and qualified to do for that employee and then know when to pass them on to a counselor. And as you know, at Costco, we have the Care Network, which is changing its name in January to Resources for Living. Um, it's a great program. I can tell you I've personally used it as well. It has a lot of resources for our employees and it's really great. It's a tool, a great tool for managers and supervisors as well. So and another thing that I think women a lot of times have, there's a misconceived notion that we're aggressive when in fact we really are trying to be assertive. Uh, so it's really, you have to be aware of your tone and your demeanor and how you present something because you want to be assertive and you want people to know that you know what you're doing and you're there to run the business and to help them. So some things that I find that are helpful is I need to set aside my feelings, my personal feelings, and look at it from the work point of view. One of our regional managers tells us, look at it from 30,000 feet. So look at it from above 
take yourself out of the situation and just look at the problem at hand and see it from all perspectives. And a lot of times that's very helpful to solve the problem and sometimes realize we're making a mountain out of a molehill. It's really a tiny thing that's easy to succeed with. And so also to remind when we're in the middle of the problem, sometimes it's difficult for us to see the solution. So when we pull back, we can reevaluate and actually uh, come up with the right decision. And usually, you know, you have to make sure you go back and, and sit down and talk with all parties at hand uh, because they'll wonder if everything ever happened in regards to it. So you want to have that conversation and, and explain to them how you got to your decision. And usually I can say that I really, using that, I really have never had a situation where I've had an employee leave still upset. They may, they may realize that, you know, when I did have a play in this, I did have responsibility for what happened between the two people or two members that are having an issue and walk away from it and realize what they can do to succeed the next time. So always be consistent too. And that's a hard thing sometimes, especially when we allow our own emotions to get in the way. We are emotional beings. Women are, you know that we're emotional beings. And I can say that I had to learn to change my personality at work. So during the Costco U training, they did a best test. I don't know if you've heard about the best test, but it stands for the B is for bold, E is expressive, S is sympathetic, and T is technical. Well, I'll tell you, when I first took that test back in 1996, probably is when I took the class, I was very high, the highest you could score on uh, expressive, and technical was right behind it. I was kind of middle of the road on bold and sympathetic was a lot lower, which to me was kind of odd because I thought I was a sympathetic person. So I learned to even those out. I had to learn to be more bold and I had to learn to be more sympathetic. And I, I took it again years later and I still was higher on technical, but everything else and expressive, but everything else was almost right there at that level. So I, I had to learn how to do that because there's different people personalities, that's what those are, work personalities, you have to know how to communicate with those folks. So I'll tell you, they told me that expressive and technical people drive each other nuts. And I said, well, that means I drive myself nuts then, doesn't it? You know, it's just, it's funny how that works. So, and like bold and sympathetic, bold just get, bold personalities just get aggravated with sympathetic people. So, you know, you really have to know that so you can actually work better as a team. And also the other thing that's cool about that is that if I know you're bold, and I'm expressive and I need someone to be more bold in a situation, I may go to you and say, hey, here's what we've got going on. I need you to use your skill as a bold individual to help with this and address this situation. So it's just about knowing, that's, that's my opinion, that's tools in your toolbox. You know, you, gotta, you have to know what you have available to you and you have to utilize those resources. And then, you know, it's really important to brainstorm with others. Uh, it's good to sit down. I mean, once a week we have a staff meeting and we talk about different things and we brainstorm, uh, how can we do something differently? How can we do that better? Um, go from there. And a lot of times too, when you're looking for people to fulfill a position and you've exhausted the resources in your, person, your department, when you do that, there's someone that comes up in another department that you didn't think about. So it's, that's really a very valuable tool to all of us to be active listeners with our staff so that we can find the right person for the job. You wanna find the right person for the job so they're gonna stay and be successful. So, and another, another thing, when we come along to situations where we're not quite sure how to handle it when it's between, let's say, between two employees that have a disagreement it's always important to investigate. Don't just take one side of the story. So you have to listen to both sides of the story. You have to listen, talk to witnesses. You have to make sure you keep it confidential with people. And then you have to sit and become, you're the judge basically. You have to look at both sides, kind of analyze what you think really happened and then sit down with each party individually and say, this is, this is how we're gonna handle it. This is what we see. This is what looks like it happened and then come to a conclusion and agreement. And usually those work out well that way. It's a lot of work um, on your part and it does require some confrontation, addressing confrontation, which for a lot of people that's difficult. Uh, I had to learn how to handle that in the early stages with my position. Uh, I wanna say the worst thing for me and I'm sure for any manager that sat here and talked with you is having to deal with the 
situation where you end up terminating an employee. So uh, those those situations can be very um, hard on you in the, in, in the beginning if you don't put it into perspective where you're you're not judging the person and their character. You're having to deal with their work behavior, and you come to the point where let's just say, say something kind of dry. They were caught stealing. So are you going to keep that person? Uh, you can't because your company policy says you can't. So there's just things, yeah, they're a great person or what have you, but you have to set all of that aside. Um, and then I, I will say to you that I think the best thing is giving credit to your team. They're the reason you're successful. Uh, if you're in it to be praised and worshiped or whatever you want to call it, then uh, you're not in the right spot. Uh, you, you, your people make you successful. And for me, I don't, I don't go around and toot and say, look what I did. I don't say, look what my team did. And that's more important than anything. And, and I don't, I don't think I could stand myself if that was, if I was always saying, look what I did. Uh, that's just not me. I know there's people in the world that are like that. I want recognition for that. And, but that's not me. I, I would rather be in the background, see my people getting the, the credit for it and beam at the fact that they're getting the credit for it. That's just how I am. So some other things that came to mind too was, and I learned this a long time ago, whatever you decide to do in your life or career, you need to be very passionate about it because you're going to be doing that for a very long time. So don't follow the money if that's all that you like about the job. It's not going to make you happy. You're going to be miserable. So I remember my father saying to me as a, as a young girl and my sister as well, that he didn't care. If we were ditch diggers, as long as we did a hard, honest day's job, and, and for me, that stuck with me all these years, that he was right about saying that to us, because we needed that to know that that was affirmation that you can do whatever you want in life, you just have to be passionate about it and do it, be honest and, and uh, give to that company what they have expectations for you and actually go above and beyond, because then that, that really is that, that does a lot for your, your boss to do that too. Um, the other thing I noticed too, when I promoted into supervisor, that was my first promotion. I had to draw the line now with friendships at work. I was now supervising people that I may were friends outside of work. We had gone to dinner, whatever the case may be. I will tell you that all of my friends at that time had high expectations for me to be harder on them than everybody else, which I appreciated. But there are people that won't be that way. They'll expect, expect you to take better care of them because you're their best friend. So with that being said, um, I, I have work relationships, but I don't have those outside of work. It's very rare that I do. And if I do, it's a person that I knew before work and maybe they go to the same church as me or in the same group I'm in outside of work. And we're, we usually keep that pretty separate. People don't aren't aware of that. Uh, it's just better for everybody involved that that doesn't happen. And if you were to, Sarah, if you were to speak to Mike Donaldson, he would tell you the same thing, that you, know, you have to draw that line, unfortunately. That's why you end up relying on your family and your friends you had before you started working for a company. Because the last thing you want is to have some kind of an investigation saying that you play favorites and you don't, you don't want that. You want to be that manager and that leader that's there for everybody. And is and people say about you that you're consistent and fair. And I know that a lot of people say that I'm firm as well. Jasmine told me that my daughter, <laughs> cause people, you know, know my daughter. So they would tell her that as well. I'm like, well, that's good. I'm glad that doesn't bother me. And those are three words I think that are good to have uh, in your, attached to you as a, as a manager or a person. And one other thing Costco has done over the years, we started what's called Journeys, and now it's called Journeys for All. So now we have, it's a volunteer program, and I'm involved in it in my locations as well. And it's about developing people. And it's not just about develop, developing women, it's about developing men as well. So it's uh, another one of those uh, kind of outreaches that we do for our employees, but it's not on the clock. So we actually can have it at our location or we can do it at another place and have a meeting, have speakers come in as well. I know I had, and when I was in Southern California, the uh, uh, Richard Galanti, who is our financial uh, executive vice president, he came and gave a speech and I've known him for a while and I, I learned a lot about him. I had uh, one of our regionals here do the same thing and it's always good to do, have those kinds of 
events that are outside of the workplace so that people don't feel pressured that they have to hurry back to their work. So development of people is probably, I would say, one of the best things that I do on a daily basis. That to me is the most rewarding of my day. I think about how can I help my employees be better? And right now, I kind of mentioned before we started recording, it's, it's difficult finding people that want to stick to it. And so then you have to kind of look outside the box, so to speak, and employees that maybe don't seem to want to do something, but when you start to work with them, they realize, hey, you know what, I can be a supervisor. I think I would like to try that. And so for me, that's, you know, you got to convince everybody else as well sometimes. But um, the most rewarding part, like I said, of the job is seeing my people succeed. So that's kind of what I put together for today. I don't know if you have any questions that you have, Sarah. I do actually have a few okay. questions. Um, so I had some prepared and then I actually was writing a few notes down while you were speaking. Um, okay. So I guess I can just go from your most recent comment about development of people. Do you have any specific success stories that you're willing to share about like maybe someone that had come in and then once you started helping with their development, you saw them succeed in a certain way? You know, I have several and I was thinking about this last night before I went to bed. There are a lot of women that I had as, as we call them callers. Remember, we now scan everything. But back when I started, we had to call the item number off of the item. So that they, they started out in that position and they were in college and they didn't think they wanted to stay with Costco. And I started working with them. And um, one in particular, well, two in particular, actually are warehouse managers now. So for me to help and develop them and they've come back and said, you know what, if you hadn't taken that time to work with me, and make me realize that I have the skill set to do this job and enjoy it. I, I probably I don't know what I'd be doing today. So, to me, that's a success for me. Yeah. Um, I don't shout it from the mountaintop, so to right. speak. I like to see that success. And I guess I should be even more. Um, uh, my daughter. I'll use my daughter mm -hmm. as a success as well. Uh, she's now the service deli manager over at Avon, and. Mm -hmm she calls me a lot and asks me for advice. And so first of all, as a mother, that's great that your own adult daughter wants to come to you and ask for advice. And she listens as well. And I, I know sometimes it's just, you know, you need to just listen. Sometimes that's all you need to do for people. It's just listen, mm -hmm. let them get it out of, out of their chest and everything like that. So she'll uh, call me for advice and say, okay, mom, this is uh, what the situation I had today. Uh, I went to my AGM and I just feel like I could have gotten some better results. Tell me what you think. And so then, you know, I can look at it from the perspective of the AGM, why maybe the questions were asked about uh, consistency in the department, about different things, and kind of give her a different point of view, uh, not just from her point, but from the AGM's point of view. Why are you asking these questions? Why are you so concerned about this? And then it becomes almost an aha moment for her, like, okay, now I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, this this one of her AGMs is not really that good at communicating uh, with her. <laughs> and I have said, well, you need to go and talk to that person and let them know that uh, they're coming across uh, as you feel demeaning, rather they may be just stating facts and moving on. So you really have to, you have to be able to communicate with that. So I'm really proud with her. I thought she would not stay with Costco. She worked with Costco for uh, to get through college, she has a master's degree and has nothing to do with Costco. And so unfortunately she had some health issues that caused her not to be able to follow that line of work. And so she's, you know, had to adapt. And I can say I had to do that too. I was in college. I was, um, Costco was my job to get through college and uh, found out that I really enjoyed it and ended up going down a different career path. So you find that a lot. I think all of us that have been a lot of college students do find that, you know, you get in there, you start taking classes and you're like, you know, this really isn't for me, but I really like that. So I'm going to go take that. So I hope I answered that for you. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Um, and kind of what you're going back to what you're saying about, you know, I feel like, especially at the Castleton warehouse, I've talked to people that they're like, yeah, I wasn't planning on staying here, but here I am, you know, 10, 20 years later, either at right. that start of that warehouse or a prior where a different warehouse so I think it's a really cool thing about Costco is like the environment it's not just a job for a lot of people it, it can be a career which I think is is really interesting especially for a retail job you don't see that very often 
Right. And I think Costco is really good at making it feel almost like a family. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. So, I mean, it, I, honestly, you can attest to that. that Costco really takes good care of their, our employees, you know, our benefits, our vacation package, all of that. I think, mm-hmm. you know, you look at it in the industry and uh, people watch our company and try to try to follow suit. So that's, yeah. that's, I don't know if I mentioned it, we are the fifth largest retailer in the world. I didn't bring that up. So uh, it's pretty cool. You know, I, when I yeah. started, we only had 10 buildings. And now we have, I had written it down, I think 824. Yeah. So we are in a lot of different countries too. So it's pretty cool. That's yeah. the other thing about Costco. You know what? You go work in the UK if you wanted to. Right. Right. Iceland. Yeah. Let's go to Iceland. You know, yeah. just whatever, <laughs> what, right? You can, you can yeah. have a lot of opportunities, especially if you want to do some of the travel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could do something at the home office, be an auditor and go everywhere you want to go. Yeah. So, and if, there's a lot of things at the home office that you can do and utilize as well. If you're getting an accounting degree, I mean, we always have uh, spots on the job bank available for accountants and different positions. So, yeah, there were a few management, especially Eric Oxford specifically that would always try to recruit me to <laughs> say right. and do something with my major. So <laughs> maybe in the future, I'm not, I'm not closed down to it. Just <laughs> right. right. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, so I guess on the other side of that, was there anyone specific when you were, you know, at just starting out or supervisor that you had looked up to? I know you said when you were asking questions, you'd call corporate or you'd ask upper management. Was there anyone specific, either man or woman that um, like really influenced you in your career, helped develop you maybe? Yes, I had several. Uh, the first one I had was when I became a friend and supervisor in Alaska. Her name was Mel- uh, Melody. And then also Liz was uh, she's now she's an auditor out here in the Midwest she I looked up to her because she always remained calm in the middle of chaos and I said well you know I need to figure that out so that I'm the same way because you have a leader that remains calm in the in chaos then you feel it's going to be okay mm-hmm. you know you, you go okay they have it under control uh they're going to walk us through and lead us through this chaos. And that's what she did. She taught me that uh, very well. And I even told her that when I saw her years later, that's what she did for me. And then when I was in Southern California, it was kind of hilarious. I was in a building with a warehouse manager named Brian. And then I was moved to another location and then no reverse. He was moved to another location. And then the guy who replaced him, his name was Rick. And the two different styles of managers, but very good at being mentors. And so uh, I worked with, you know, Brian and then Rick, and then I got transferred to the building Brian was at again. So I'm like, oh, I'll get to work with him again. And which was kind of cool because, you know, here now I've developed more and I become uh, a better manager, or AGM in that position. And then I work with him and then they move him again. And guess what? Rick has moved to that building. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but I had said to Brian, I said, I'm not following you to Rancho Cucamonga. Lo and behold, they moved me to Ranch Cucamonga with Brian. I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh. And so I worked with him there. And then another manager came and took his place. And then Rick ended up in the last building I was in before I came out here. And they moved me to that one with him. So it was really great for me because these men uh, were great mentors. And they were, you know, I could call them anytime that I wanted to. And to actually have them tell me how successful I had become the more time I was in, in the position. And had rotated through with them. So that yeah. was pretty cool. That's a cool story. Yeah. And I like- knew they weren't going to come out here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, anyways, so it's pretty cool. And I can call them anytime I want, you know, if right. I need to or email them, which is great. Uh, that's the cool thing about Costco. You get moved around, but you still stay in, and you still connect people. Because mm-hmm. uh, you know what? You really need someone that's not in your location, and this goes for any business that Mm -hmm. you can actually reach out to and talk to, that's kind of neutral, that you can just share or vent or whatever it is, um, help you get a perspective and a handle on whatever problem you're trying to solve. Uh, It's, you know, it's good. You need someone to be able, in your life period, you need someone to come listen and bounce off, bounce off of, so. Help you, sometimes it helps you reaffirm you're doing the right thing. Right. Coming to the right conclusion. Right. So, and they also Definitely. assist you with, okay, Elisa, you know, um, 
maybe want to try this next time because maybe that wasn't as effective, you know, or they may see and you're thinking, oh yeah, this is how I'm supposed to do this. And then they tell you like, oh, hmm, I didn't realize that's how that looks, you know? So it's, right. it's good. You, you can't do it by yourself. No. Yeah. Especially because when you're in that mindset, that's all you're thinking about. You're like, your judgment's clouded a lot of times or you're that right. you know, straight mind that you're just looking straight ahead and having that extra right person or two to help you out is yeah in any exactly. situation yeah so also I, I know i didn't really touch base and you probably already know this because of business classes but uh keeping a calendar and making sure that you plan your day you know you have plans for the next day i will tell you here at costco you can actually because of the business mm -hmm. you never know what to expect you can plan to do a b and c and you're really happy and excited when you leave for the day and you accomplish day yeah that's how it is and, and some people really have a hard time with that but you got tomorrow you come tomorrow and you try to get b and c done and whatever else you need to do and then sometimes you realize well that wasn't really that important anyways or i can delegate that to somebody else mm -hmm. so yeah. it's you know you never know what's going to happen yeah i've definitely <laughs> learned that from from experience Yes, exactly. You never know. Power goes out. Now, what do you do? You know, you right. have a hundred baskets of groceries you got to open away. Right. You, you know, no one can purchase them. So, yeah, yep. you, things change. You know, that happens. Yeah. And you just have to go with it, go with the flow, mm -hmm. so to speak. And, yeah. And talk about it later and tell what a crazy day you had. Right. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's usually the part that I look forward to is ranting to someone about it. What happened today? Right. Yeah. Let me tell you. How much time do we have? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> exactly so and you know what's funny uh especially when you're married um you know what you what your husband about just about how much time he has to listen because you know he's like oh my gosh here we go and at one point he'll start to say to me you know all i'm hearing now is cluck 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 i'm like oh okay that's my don't bother sharing with him anymore yes. because he's, he's done listening so, so you know you <laughs> i'm finished <laughs> so but anyways, that, he makes me laugh. So that's a good thing. Well, <laughs> good. Yeah. For so, sure. so, you know, you, you usually have somebody in your life that you can talk to besides your spouse. Right. <laughs> anyways, oh, anything else? Um, yeah, I do have one more. So um, you talked about whenever your daughter was born, you had to kind of balance work, you know, work-life balance and I'm assuming at that point, because you said recently Costco's gotten better at it. So at that point in your life, was did you get did you have any blowback or any consequences, I guess, from trying to balance that at your position I'll, in all three family? I'll tell you, uh, when I got the call that they wanted to promote me to AGM and they were gonna move me 45 minutes away from home to a building that would take maybe even longer on the freeway systems to get there. At that time, my husband also worked 45 minutes to 50 minutes away. And for me, being a young mom and my daughter being, I think she was three, I had to say, you know, I really need to be closer to home right now because I have my daughter small. And they were understanding, but when I hung up, I thought, that's it. I've probably blown it. I'm probably never going to be offered that again because here I was, you know, the first age, I was the first female AGM. And so they called me two weeks later and offered me what, a building that was 20 minutes from home and I took the job. So I, that was affirmation for me because I thought that's it as a woman, they're not ever going to do it again. And, you know, some people would probably say you should have taken it, but I needed that. I, I've always wanted to be a mom, you know, and being mm -hmm. a mom, you got to be there. So that worked out. And my husband and I, fortunately, cause you know, our shifts are different. Um, as an AGM, I was the only AGM in the building. So it was the GM and the AGM and that was it. Nowadays you have two or three and sometimes mm -hmm. even four AGMs in buildings just because of what, how our business has grown and what we do in each building uh, as well. So matter of fact, back then we only had we meat bakery deli. We had none of the other ancillaries. We had no gas entire center. That was it. So mm -hmm. you had less things you had to manage. When you add all these extra little businesses inside right. of business, there's more. So I knew that my scheduling was, you know, I was going to have to really 
make sure that I had quality time with her in the morning since I was working at one o'clock in the afternoon. Whereas my husband, he went to work early and he was able to get her from daycare. So we were in a fortunate position that um, he always, he had weekends off during that time in her life. And someone was always going to be home with her in the evenings. So we each, we, it worked out well. And for me, making sure that my day off of the week was, was Wednesday, pretty much it was Wednesdays then, so that I could go and be in her classroom and be there and do things with her and stuff. It really worked out well. Yeah. She also was, you know, we wanted an independent leader. You know, when you ask for that, you get a very strong old child because that's the quality they exhibit when they're little. So she was very confident of herself at a very early age and was fine. You know, I drop her off for kindergarten and she says, mom, I know how to get there. It's okay. Cause I take the day before and I, I got yeah. this on my own and I'm like, Oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> should I be excited or cry? Right. right. So, you know, so I would, I can honestly tell you that I feel like I was, we were very fortunate with our daughter. She she wasn't a problem in high school or anything like that. Yeah, she had things I found about later that she did, but don't we all do things that we aren't supposed to do? Yes, oh. we do. And we make it <laughs> through, hopefully. And just, and for us, we wanted to make sure that we balance work and life and our life. So we were always the parents, everybody wanted to come to our house. You know, we both work full-time job, but all of our friends want to be at our house. Yeah. Because we were the fun parents. You know, we, we didn't let them do stupid stuff, but, you know, uh, several of her girlfriends wanted to come over because we always ate interesting foods that she never had before. You know, so it was really cool that, uh, you know, for me, I was like, this is awesome because I was so worried that I wasn't going to have that kind of relationship because I mm -hmm. work so many hours and all that. Right. So it, it, it can be done. And I think, you know, it's, it's undaunting at times, let me tell you. Uh, I think I only missed one thing in her life that was important, and that was by accident. So I was there for all the concerts and yeah. all the soccer games, and not all the soccer games. My husband hit most of those since he coached, but yeah. I made it to a lot of them, you know. So there, yeah. but even though I would love to have been to every one of them, that wasn't possible. So, but I had to work at it, and mm -hmm. I had a spouse that worked with me at it too. Okay. And I do know there's a lot of single single parents that manage it too. Yeah. You know, they have support. They have a mother or father or a sister or brother. We're there for them to help as well. So, yeah. And I believe that I know the struggles. I mean, with working with employees, uh, I will tell you the Care Network helps you find daycare, though. So, that was another awesome thing that yeah. we have available. So, you can help. Uh, they vet them for you already, which is good because you're not That's sure good. what in the world you're getting into. Cause you don't yeah. Know. You don't so. leave your kid with some stranger. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. So, and I never thought I would say, I'll be so happy when she knows how to drive because she was in marching band. And uh, yes, because we, we had to take her everywhere. I and mean, we had to make yep. sure that, you know, we had a plan. Like, I'll pick your kid up and drop him off of mine. And then if you'll bring him home, that'd be great. Right. So we always right. kind of having to do that. But right. it was well worth it. Okay. And she doesn't have any regrets. You know, she, she really, uh, and we always took a friend with us on vacation. Okay. So that was good too. So it wasn't just her and two adults, you know, so right. that kind of thing. So uh, the only regret in my life is that I wasn't able to have more kids. And mm -hmm. she'll tell you that she was like yeah. lonely being an only child, but that's why I made sure we had friends and that's all kinds great. of stuff going on. So family too. But when we lived in yeah. California, there we had no family out there. So it was, our family was a, our church family, basically. Mm -hmm. All of us that had no family got together for Thanksgiving, which was really fun. Oh, that's so it fun. It was really fun. That was really good. So yeah, you have to learn how to make those memories and different things. Uh, may not be exactly how your childhood was, but you're going to make new ones with your family. Yeah. So, okay. and it's rewarding. You, you, yeah. you know, you're not going to, I mean, yeah, you know what? I probably, I could keep myself busy if I was home every day. I had all kinds of things I love right. to do. Right. But you know, you, you want to get out there and you, for me, you know, working isn't so much. Yeah. It pays for my livelihood, but it's not my life. Mm -hmm. But for me working, the part that I truly enjoy is helping others succeed. Mm -hmm. Truly. Mm -hmm. I could care less about me. Yeah. And I know that may sound funny to people, but it's the truth. That makes me feel really good inside. I mm -hmm. get real emotional about that. I get excited to see people succeed. Right. So, you know, 
20 years down the road, Sarah, you're going to have to let me know what you're doing so I can be okay. excited about, about what you succeeded at as well. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> any, any other, other thoughts? I don't think so. That is all that I had, but I really appreciate your time. Is there anything else you want to add before we end? Um, not off the top of my head, but you know, anytime you need, need to reach out or whatever, I mean, I, I can figure something out for you guys if that's, yeah. you know, I, I really do. I do love the developing of people mm -hmm. and sharing my story. I think yeah. a lot of times that's really helpful for people mm -hmm. and there's more. I mean, we could talk for hours probably yeah. about uh, different things that happened along the way, different situations that are hilarious mm -hmm. and stuff that occurred. But um, so I'm, I'm whatever you need. Call me if I can fit it in. I can do it. Help all right. out. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm probably going to um, add your email to once we send this out, I'll just okay, yeah. add your email if that's okay. And then no problem. people can reach out if they have right. questions. Email me if you have questions, whatever. I have no problems at all with that whatsoever. And, you know, and that's what that gives me a, to become another person that doesn't know your work, whatever. And right. You can, right. You can reach out to. And it doesn't, it's not going anywhere but there, you know. So, right. And, uh, if I get to Castleton, it probably won't be for a while. Maybe I'll see you in person. Hopefully. <laughs> Come shop here if you want. Okay. I might, <laughs> have, to our place. I might have to I'm do only, that. I'm, I'm off on Tuesdays and Sundays. So you okay. know, if you're looking for me, you're not going to find me on those days. Okay. okay. I'm I'm usually only at Castleton like the end of the week. So okay. unless you're there Thursday, Friday, I'm probably yes. not. <laughs> I won't be. I won't be. But you, you got yeah. my email. You can reach yeah. out anytime. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Lisa. I really appreciate it. It was my good pleasure. catching up. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm trying to get out.